Hi guys, I'm Spider and welcome back to WebIO. We're carrying on today with the renovations of WebIO, um, focusing on the farm and orchard. Um, we're also going to be doing some work on the forest path that leads to the mountaintop hotel that was built in the last um, video. So whilst the terraforming's on screen, I will discuss uh, my inspirations for this build, same as I did previously. Um, as I said, I am from the Midlands in the UK and we have quite a large agricultural um, aspect. The area where I live, um, we do have several farms. I'm very fortunate enough to live in a small village. Um, one of the main things around here is that every section of the village actually is bordered by a farm. Uh, as a result, we're able to get quite a lot of farm fresh vegetables and fruits and it's really nice because they are a lot tastier than what you generally get in the supermarket and also it supports local which is something that I am very inclined to do. Um, ever since I was quite young, I grew up basically wanting to be a farmer or have some variety of farm, mostly from the animal aspect. Um, I won't lie, I am a a very animal orientated person having grown up in a household with a lot of pets um, it seems very unnatural to me not to be around animals um, I think that might have some bearing on why um, I've always wanted to be part of a farm life if you will um, another reason that I wanted to very much include a farm in all of my builds is because Thanks to my dad's influence, I have been a big fan and a big advocate of homegrown. Um, I'm, again, fortunate enough to have a small plot in my back garden where I'm able to grow vegetables. I do not have a natural gift for it though and unfortunately find that I tend to kill <laughs> my plants before they've been given a true chance, which is a bit of a shame. But I am learning and it's one of those things that you just, you either, you've got a knack for it or you don't, in my opinion, um, but you can learn to deal if you don't have the knack. So back on, on screen, uh, you'll see that I'm putting a little bit of water down. Um, I did mess up a little bit um, because I didn't realise you could actually fill in um, the waterfalls from a base level which was rather annoying but it happens um, I just wanted basically to give this idea that the pond went around the natural curvature of the land that we built last time um, it would also then lead to the farm which would give it a natural water source um, because I feel that that's quite an important thing now when I say I mean uh, when I say that it's an important thing what I mean is that surely having to import water is worse for the environment than using the stuff that nature has gifted to you so that was another thing that I wanted to try and recreate it's also a sort of a bit of a nod to my husband who grew up in an area where they have a lot of natural springs um, it is just sort of a little way for me to incorporate my loved ones into my game so again, I'm going to apologise because as you can see, we're having to keep going back and doing a little bit of extra terraforming. Um, I have been practising with the uh, cliff edge tree glitch and I did make extensive use of that in this build. Um, I apologise if the footage is a little bit jumpy. Um, I did have to take out a few minutes here and there because it was running a bit long. I mean, it's still quite a long video at 21 minutes. but. I didn't want anyone to get particularly bored. So again, as you can see, I'm just filling in the area with a lot of trees, trying to make it as full as I possibly can, just to really drive home the whole forest feel. So while uh, the terraforming still on screen, I'll just go back to my little bit of discussion earlier. Um, like I said, I grew up in a household with a lot of animals and that hasn't changed. Um, we currently have two cats and two leopard geckos and if I could I would have many many more cats and dogs and 
birds and fish and pretty much any animal that you could think of I would adopt and I would adopt animals that were in need of a home rather than particularly seeking out newborn animals that isn't to say that I wouldn't adopt newborn animals I just feel that there are a lot of animals that are in need and if I could I would provide them a home for example if I were fortunate enough to come into some land I wouldn't necessarily go and make it a farm even though I would enjoy that I would potentially turn it into a boarding kennels or a cattery or a sort of um, like a foster home for animals in need what about you guys did you grow up with a lot of animals do you like farms just tell me in the comments so on screen you can see um, I've just sort of built up uh, the staircase and I'm again trying to place trees as close as I can not necessarily to hide it but to, to to make it feel really full and sort of almost cramped but not cramped at the same time okay so once I filled in a lot of the trees I then did actually start decorating around the farm the house that's to the left there is Tyra's house which is one of the player characters based on one of our cats um, what I'm building in this area is a small greenhouse which is again a small nod to my dad I grew up him always having a greenhouse which was where he would start a lot of his um, tomato plants etc uh, so it was important to me to include that on the left side of the house is where I will be intending to put the stables now there is a lot of custom content for stables and horses which I will put in the description box below the um, creator code for the horse um, design that I use I think it is amazing and I cannot believe the amount of creativity that went into making these there are several different horses but I really liked the black one in particular which is why I have chosen to use that So what I'm doing here is I'm using a bunk bed in the centre with two customised stalls either side to make a sort of a housing shape. I've then got a simple panel with the horse decoration and two simple panels with the barn door decoration um, and then to sort of give that little bit of an illusion I've put a wooden barrel in front of the horse so it hides the bottom part and then I'm just putting a brick at um, the wooden bucket next to it. I did initially put the fruit basket up so it looked like the horse had something to eat but it just came up a little bit too high. So again going back to the right side now to the far, to the greenhouse um, again I will link this custom design in the comments in, in the comment in the description box below. Um, I really like this actually it, it's natural but also a bit rustic which I thought was nice. Um, I'm just decorating the sides by dropping a few items or placing a few items that look like they would be in a greenhouse. In particular we've got a plucked lily and a moss ball etc. Again the flooring continuing to be cobblestones which will go pretty much the entirety of my island. I'm just putting down the bonsai shelf because again like I said this greenhouse is a sort of a nod to my dad and something I remember him doing when I was younger was growing bonsais. He had one that I can't remember how long he had it but it was in a shallow blue tray and honestly I think he still had it when I moved out. I'm not sure if he still does have it though. So these two uh, dirt patches in front of the house were where I initially planned to have the um the agricultural field if you will i'm gonna have one side be pumpkins and one side be yellow hyacinths to emulate corn 
I am hopeful that they are able to port over some more of the Pocket Camp furniture as one of the items in Pocket Camp is actually like stalks of corn on a um, support. I thought that would look really good there but in lieu of that happening I have decided to put Yellow Hyacinth which you will see a little bit later on. So the cobblestones that are being placed now I am going to take through the forest path as well obviously with the new design slots that we've been given in the latest update um i could go back and change it but I, I really like the idea of the cobbles going through that little bit so it's sort of like it's a natural path that has been taken advantage of and it's sort of tamed down to fit the surrounding area and um, again just filling in a lot of blank space on the ground with my leafy confetti stuff which is based on other designs that i found in the um, terminal but weren't the right colours and they weren't quite right designs for me so I took a lot of influence from different designs but did create them on my own. So I'm just putting down a beekeeper hive here because of obviously the corn I thought it would be a nice little tie in there because it would encourage a lot of bug activity in real life and, and there you go just by magic we've got pumpkins and yellow hyacinths. I did realise at this point that I had other items that I wanted to use for the farm and having a 3x3 three three, um, area for pumpkins and um, the fake corn wouldn't enable me to use that so I had to do a little bit of redesigning which is what's going on here. Uh, on the last episode I said that I was uh, tainted against Flip because he never visited my island. Well. If you saw in the lower part of the screen then he's actually visiting today and there he goes off to the left. Um, I did speak to him about getting a bug model this time. So I've just reduced the planting areas down to a 2x3 area each one um, and I'm repositioning the beekeeper's hive. Um, I am going to be filling in the other two, one with the watermelon coloured version of the beach ball there'll be six of them to create a full illusion of a watermelon patch and then on the other one there will be turkey day wheat because again you know you'd grow wheat on a farm so coming back down into the forest path we can keep extending that um, cobblestone path round and um, you can see i've put down a couple of flowers and um, trees just to give me ideas of where things are going to go So in this little bit there's a bit of a gap between the cedar tree and the, I want to say it's an oak tree. This is because this section of the pond I thought was quite a nice little photo spot. So I wanted this area to be kind of open so that if I wanted to sit in front of the water I could open up the camera and not have to worry about fighting my way through, through trees to find a decent photo which is actually something I do later on in the video. Um, so that was a little bit of forward thinking there for myself. So again, just filling in a lot of the empty space. Now, I was saying earlier about my um, dad being quite an influence, and he still is. Um, whenever I have a gardening or um, almost homegrown question, he's the first person I go to. Um, he's always given me really good advice. He's aware that I'm not particularly good with plants, so he's always quick to suggest things that will that they're able to withstand um, essentially what is bad maintenance. So I'm really thankful for that, and I'm, I'm glad that I've got someone that I can speak to about that. I'm just putting in a few shrubs among the trees um, again give it the really full and overgrown sort of idea and as you can see I'm then putting the watermelon balloon I did put down some of my leafy confetti underneath it so that it wasn't just straight onto the dirt path and um, just to give it like at the bottom of watermelons they have like a lot of leaves same as pumpkins really so I'm taking over the cobblestones now into the orchard uh, sort of just taking it and weaving it around the trees so that 
and connects everything. I've got one of each tree, so it's not really an orchard, but they're all in one area for me, should I need to uh, make a few bells here or there. And again, more leafy confetti on the floor, just trying to keep it pretty natural. As you notice, I haven't really used much of the floral leafy confetti um, in, in this build. Something that is going to cause a problem is if they choose to in reintroduce some of the other fruit trees that they had in previous games or uh, for example like in Pocket Camp. Um, obviously we had the banana trees as well as the coconut trees which were sand based but there was other fruit trees. I can't at the moment remember the names of them but I would like that to come in a future update I think. I think that would be a nice little addition. So once again we are making use of the leaf umbrella. Now, I did put a mush um, light behind that bamboo. I just thought it would give it a nice little bit of a light in that particular area so that if I went up there at night time it would give a little bit of illumination without being too obvious. So I have been able to catalogue all of the cardboard boxes and I wanted to have the boxes in the orchard but I wasn't sure which box was which so I just placed everything down to get an idea so that when they went back into my inventory I'd know which order they were in. So as you can see I'm just popping them down and uh, giving them a twist here and there to give a bit more um, variety in the way spaces are. Um, a little scarecrow there, you can't go wrong with a scarecrow on a farm. Now I said earlier about the natural water source and you could have um, the natural source and still be able to just basically dip a bucket in but I like the water spout I'm not sure if that's the official name of it in the game but it just seems like you would have a spout going into the water source that you could pump water pump that's the right no, no, the right one yeah it just seems like you would have one of those near to the water source and obviously a little wooden bucket in front of it to catch it so after I have placed the um, beekeeper's hive I dropped a wasp nest next to it to give it a bit more of a indication of what that area is for and I've just planted a few little um, weeds at the back just again I, I really like the weeds in this game the, the difference that you get each season is really really nice so Again, we just want to put a bit more light into the area without it being over the top. And I do feel that the soft light that you get from the street lamps is just really, really nice. Now, ever since I learned that you could place the tools, I've been obsessed with putting them down. So I really like the natural wooden look of the flimsy tools. So I wanted to make sure that they were there as well. And I know that a lot of people will use the uh, leaf piles on forest walkways, but they just work so well. So again, we're just putting in a few extra trees, just really bringing it back around to the entrance uh, stairway to the mountaintop hotel. And again, trying to incorporate the whole theme. So I'm keeping the blue flowers, the purple flowers and the white flowers and trying to make things pretty cohesive but even though they're built on different days I wanted to make them feel like they could have been built at the same time you can see I'm just planting a few more shrubs here and there now this area was all, all squared out and I didn't like that so um, I'm just re-terraforming the land to give us a little bit of an idea uh, of where things are So, sorry for the jumping footage there, I did fast forward to the next day um, just in this particular area um, so that I could get some of the trees starting to grow up so I, I could see where we were at because like, as I said in the last video I do really like the stunted growth on trees and I wanted to give it that little bit of a um, the, the height difference and plus stunted trees don't count towards your total tree amount on the island and since I know that I'm likely to include a lot of trees I wanted to try and reduce the amount 
at this point so that I wouldn't have to go back later and then be like, right, okay, I'll take this tree out and put a little tree in instead. So just going back along the path and filling in a few empty spots here and there, just moving things around to get the heights that I wanted, just to make sure things look right. Um, just a couple of little bits here and there, just to finish everything up and uh, finishing up here for example just get rid of the water and the curve so that the tree will be there and I think that's pretty much it for this build. So as you can see here, I actually did fill in the wheat and the watermelons off screen. And I, I feel like it's a really nice put together natural area and it's quite peaceful. Um, again, this is the following day from when the build was actually done. Um, but I feel like the colours are a lot more vivid in this particular instance. Just coming along here it'll be showing you the photo spot that I spoke of earlier in the video. Thanks for joining me for this build guys and I hope you subscribe and see you next time.